Uh, very well coached, first and foremost. Lots of talent. Um, they had two players drafted last year in the NFL and some others that are still in camp. So they are a, uh, a very good opponent. Um, and it'll be a great test for us to start the year. Yeah, every year it seems like they, they have a tremendous offense. So I'm sure they've had guys waiting in the wings. Um, Cup and those others were, were dynamic players that could have played for anybody. So I'm sure they'll have another group that can come in and, and compete very well. Yeah, he's a good player. Um, really moves around, extends plays. Um, we had one at Houston named Case Keenum that he kind of reminds me of. Um, very accurate, can get out of the pocket, make plays, can hurt you getting first downs with his legs and um, is, a, is a real competitor. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're like I said, anytime you're ranked fourth in the country in, in that league, um, uh, you're, you're doing something right. And so they're, they're a good team. They could, you know, play with a lot of teams in Division One football, and, and we know that, and uh, we won't take them lightly. So that's going to be a great challenge for some of those new guys up front early on, and um, we'll see how they handle it. Yeah, I don't, I mean, there, there can't, it can't be a trap game when you look at the results around the country the last few years playing FCS teams. And our, our players know that. They know the caliber of teams that are, are in that um, division. And, and uh, so that's how we'll approach it. All you got to do is look, like you said, look at last year what they did. Washington State had a very good football team and came in there first game of the year and beat them. And so we'll, we'll know, our team will know about that. They'll know how good this team is, and we should uh, prepare accordingly. Yeah, I mean, he's a, he's a big guy to move, there's no doubt. I mean, he's a force inside there. He does a good job of keeping those linemen off, those linebackers thing, come downhill and make plays. And, and so we'll have our hands full. Um, a couple of those guys, you know, Jack hadn't you know, started a Division One football game, and, and so that'll be a, a good barometer for him to see where he's at and going against a very talented defensive player like that. <coughs> uh, they mix it up quite a bit. They play, you know, some man in conference. Didn't play a ton of it last year against Washington State, um, but you know, lots of too high stuff. And but they'll mix up their coverages. We see how they, how they kind of use a tight end as either in line, stretch them out. Something they do a lot of that kind of stuff. Yeah, offensively, I mean, they do everything. That, that's the tough part. Uh, the quarterback run game. Then they'll be in quads one play, and, and they move people all over the place, and have a tremendous scheme. And, so week to week, you never know what you're going to see, and, and that's a credit to their coaching staff, being able to get that implemented and get that coached and, and their players executed at a high level. Other than obviously picking up the win, what do you want to see from your team? Yeah, defensively, you know, trying to uh, obviously stop the run first and foremost, and then we got to create more turnovers. We've got to find a way. Um, there, there will probably be a lot of plays in this game. We've got to find a way to get the ball out. Got to find a way to turn them over somehow. And offensively, start fast, secure the football, and, and then establish a run game. We weren't good enough at, by a long ways last year uh, running the football. And um, hopefully, we've made some strides in that area. I know they're replacing a lot of production, but they've also got a lot of players who've had a lot of snaps. For your team, you've got a bunch of players making their first snaps this year. Is that a concern for you? Yeah, I mean, we have a lot of guys back as well. So I think both teams do, really, when you look at it. We have a lot of veteran players on both sides of the football. And so I, I don't think that's, that's much of a concern. You've got several players in Houston in that area. Any update on their families? Yeah, we keep asking. Um, some are in different areas um, that haven't been hit too significantly. And, and I know a lot of people are trying to figure out where they're to go or to stay. And so we'll just, we just get daily updates from our players. And, and our thoughts and prayers are with their families. And, and hopefully that subsides soon. And 
uh, we can get on the road to recovery down there. When you look at teams like TCU and Texas who are hosting Rice and, and the University of Houston right now, I guess, what do you think that that says about the camaraderie that kind of just exists across college football? Yeah, it's awesome. I think anytime, especially in, in our state, um, you have something like this, you see the the type of people we have in this state and the type of uh, leadership we have in the state to reach out and um, take care of others. And I was actually at University of Houston um, when we had to evacuate one time and we were in Dallas for two weeks and they put us up at SMU and it was the same type of, of treatment and that just, uh, it's awesome to see in this, this day and age. Uh, there's a hotel, Hilton something, um, right there in Dallas. And waited it out for two weeks and, wasn't easy because you know the team has a lot of family and friends and their apartments and houses and waiting to see what happens. So I can empathize with what they're going through right now. I mean, it was tough. Um, like I said, the focus is, is the biggest thing. And trying to make sure they're thinking about a thousand other things and family and uh, their apartments and their cars and. So football is really not the, the biggest thing on, on your mind at that point. So I, I don't know um, if there is a way to handle it appropriately, but I just remember being a tough situation for us. Can the football aspect of that, though, be a comfort knowing that it's at least consistent, 100-yard field, coaches are the same, players are the same? Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, I think you can find some peace while you're out there. It's just when you're not and you're watching the news and you're hearing reports that I think that's hard to, uh, to not keep going back to it. Yeah, he got here um, late, but has really come on uh, second part of fall camp. We feel like we have quite a few bodies that can rotate through there now, and he's just a guy who made some plays in the last couple of scrimmages and we felt like uh, had earned the right to get in the rotation. How much did you Uh, I would say about 50-50. Yeah, we moved him in and out just based on need, and someone was banged up that day. So we learned both, which was good, because um, you never know, you know what spot you may need help. Is Joe also in the mix there in the defensive tackle? He is. He is. Um, we'll see how that all plays out. But he's had a good camp. He's worked hard, and so hopefully uh, we can get him out there. No, no. He, he ended up um, practicing quite a bit during fall camp. Yes, sir. Can you entertain me this season being your fifth compared to maybe even just last year? What was the biggest difference in field confidence, just emotion wise, going into this season maybe than, than last year? Yeah, I mean, every year is a new opportunity and excitement and. Just ready to get out there. I mean, I don't think it changes much. I mean, you feel great about your team every year going into game one, and then you figure it out. So I think uh, we're in a good place as a program. We like where we're at. We like how hard our teams worked. We like our coaching staff. And so now we just got to go get it done. I know you can probably answer more questions about feeling pressure this offseason than you can probably count. I know you said like, if you're not going to the college football playoff or in the mix, I mean, wonder this offseason was there ever an inner battle at all questioning how you've done things before and just trying to look at it in a different way and, and then maybe reverting back to what's gotten you here and, and the success that you've had that's put you in the position that you're in and, and whether you look at philosophy wise differently than, than years past I think you evaluate every offseason what, what you did good what you did bad what you can get better at and then you take it from there. Um, and a lot of it has to do with your personnel, your team, and your staff, and, and what you're going to be good at. And that's what we try to do each offseason is evaluate what we did good, what we did good, bad, and where we got to go from here. And so we didn't, didn't change that philosophy. Can you give us an idea about the running back rotation on my shakeout Saturday? I really can't because I, I'm not sure exactly. I think Justin Stockton will start the game, and then we'll kind of roll with it from there. We want to you know, make sure that 
the next guys in, if it's going to be Trey or, or Desmond, are comfortable with the plays we're giving them, being that they haven't been in the system very long. And so um, we'll kind of start with Justin and, and seeing how the game goes, take it from there. He is, yeah. Felton's had a really good camp. Um, he's a guy who you always know you can put in. He's going to execute your offense at a high level and, and uh, be very steady for you. I got to go check the, once we actually get through week one, a couple weeks back, Nick Shumanek was on the verge, and I uh, still think he is this weekend, to be the only FBS, or I'm sorry, the only uh, quarterback at the FBS level, or the Power Five level, rather, to be in his fifth year and actually have it be his first game start. What do you expect his emotions to be like just, just going into a second like that after having waited for an opportunity for so long? Yeah, I think all that's kind of gone by the wayside. I mean, he knew he was going to be the starter for a while, and so he's had a lot of time to let it digest and um, really just work his tail off to make sure that he made this last year count. So I don't think it'll be any sort of crazy emotions. He, he played some really meaningful football for us last year and played at a high level, and so um, I think his focus is just to show everybody how good he really is. Just in y'all's conversations, though, do you sense that that desire to, to go out and be able to show what he's capable of and, and why he waited around for this opportunity? Yeah, no question. I mean, he, he wants to get his money's worth. When you sit around that long and um, you're around really good players and you know you're a talented player yourself, you want to make sure you maximize that one year you have. And he's done everything to put himself in that position to do it as far as work ethic and studying and leadership, and now it's just a matter of going out and executing. As the head coach with Stockton being the running back, how many ideal touches do you think he's going to get between flights of the season? What would the ideal goal for you to hit for him? For the season? For the season. Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, like I said, we're going to kind of rotate that as as the game's going, as we're doing. I, I did a poor job last year getting him going in certain situations, circumstances, and, and I'll do a better job this year. So his touches should be up um, as long as he's healthy because he's a dynamic player and we'll find ways to uh, to get him the football. Has the team back to the double T yet? Uh, not yet. Not yet. We're still trying to figure that out. Is that so. a possibility where you go into the game without earning the double T? You have to show up on Saturday. <laughs> Check it out. Yeah, I've been very proud of Mike. He came on at the end of last year. He was really flashing in some of those um, last few games. And then watching him this offseason, the way he's changed his body, you know, the work ethic, uh, the pace of play, you know, going full speed every rep, it's, it's really been exciting to see. And um, he's become more of a vocal leader for us as well. So that second year, coming from junior college, it seems like everything slowed down for him. And I've um, been proud of the camp he's had. Yeah, we felt like that's where an area that we had to get better at so we could play more snaps at a higher level. And when, when he was out there, we needed him to go full go. And that's the biggest difference I've seen is, is that he, he's bigger, stronger, faster, more conditioned. And um, when we ask him to go, he's going full speed every play. What kind of an impact do you think you've had or hope that you've had being more involved with the defense? Uh, I think more than anything, just so they know that, hey, we're on this together. I'm here with you. and, and We've been working our tails off to get this thing right together, and uh, let's go out and show how much we've improved. I know a lot of times we probably get questions about Mike Leach having played three years for him, but uh, you know, having played for Spike for a year, you guys wear the decal on your helmet. How often do you share lessons or stories with some of your players about uh, Coach Spike and, and uh, just your thoughts on being able to honor him and bring the decal on the helmet this year? Yeah, he was, you know, obviously the one to recruit me, and I was here two years with with Coach Dykes, and um, just a great man, great mentor. You know, you you look at how he treated people more than anything. He was a great coach, won a bunch of games, did more with less than probably anybody in college football. But um, the way he treated people, the relationships he carried on, the impact he had on their lives, um, it was awesome. And uh, he's a guy that, if, if as a coach, if you can be half of what he was to people, then then you're you're going to be a wild success. Yeah, I think, you know, they obviously were friends and, you know, they went about it different ways, um, have different personalities, but, but both um, had a great impact on the game and a great impact on the players they coached.